Hey everybody, what up? All right, so in this video, I'm talking about Tailwind CSS and just basically why I don't like it. Why I'm sort of glad that it's really never taken off, uh, regardless of what a lot of people think about it. I mean, it is quite bu buzzworthy in the technology field, but it really has never taken off um, for how popular it is said to be. So uh, Tailwind CSS was created in 2017 by Adam uh, Wathan. It is an open source project on GitHub. Here it is. It's got 88,600 stars on GitHub, which is very impressive. Uh, contributors here, so I'm sure that the creator is number one, but we're going to find out. Uh, but anyway, this project was created in 2017. Uh, it's considered a utility-first CSS framework designed to help you build custom designs by combining small utility classes with HTML. Anyway, it seems like GitHub is having problems, uh, but it's created by this guy here, so a smart developer, um, very successful project. But anyway, I'm not a big fan of it. I'll go through some of the reasons. All right, so anyway, it, it is a successful project. Obviously, we've seen that on GitHub. Uh, some of the pros of this project is that it's customizable. So Tailwind's configuration file allows you to do a lot of customizations with the design system. It's considered to be easy to use for rapid prototyping, so you can quickly throw together designs and such without having to write a bunch of custom CSS. It can have a small bundle size, assuming you use Purge CSS to remove unused styles. So you keep your production CSS pretty lightweight, unlike something like Bootstrap where everything's included. Uh, and then, you know, there's no bloat. So again, um, you only use the classes that, that you're declaring. So I spun up a quick project here of why, uh, what a Tailwind project looks like. So here you can see Tailwind uh, config, post CSS config. These are typical config files that you'll have in a Tailwind CSS project. But you can see it's dependencies. Um, you can use NPM to install the dependencies. Pretty simple and basic to understand. If we look at a website here, so this is a website that is quickly spun up with Tailwind. So it looks very kind of, I would say, like bootstrap, you know, bootstrappy or whatever. It's like the same sort of styles of websites that we've really had for the last decade plus now at this point. So before I get too much in the ugliness of this, I do want to mention that for people that say that the project is blowing up, there's really not that many jobs in this uh, using this technology. Just an, as an example, if you look at something like LinkedIn and you look at United States, all Tailwind CSS jobs, there's only 103 listed right now. So that is just not very much. And if you look at the showcase of the websites that are using it, uh, ChatGPT is a very simple UI, but it is using it. So that's probably its most impressive. Shopify, who knows how they're using it. This might just be their homepage. Uh, but other than that, there's a lot of websites here that I've just never heard of. They're not very large. All right, so going back to my little example here. So this is a, a Tailwind website. Now let's get into why Tailwind is bad. So I'm going to jump over to this. What the, the thing I hate the most about it is like here's a simple button. And you can't actually see the button, but if I hover over it, um, this button has 16 classes assigned to it. So that's just the way that Tailwind works. If you look on the right-hand side, all these button classes are necessary to style this button and clearly I still have a CSS issue I quickly spun up website and it's just ugly as hell and we basically reinvented what you could do with traditional CSS on the left hand side which is much easier to maintain so I'll get into that a little bit more when we're looking at uh, Tailwind we've actually like reinvented CSS but in a more cryptic way so here's some of the examples justify content space between is a CSS flexbox property uh, it's a, you know it's easy class to to reason about once we learn flexbox we understand how it works in css but tailwind has justified between so it's like why not just have the same name as what the css class uh, or property is um, align item center just item center like why are we doing that text small like what does small actually mean with hyphen one half instead of just saying 50 percent like for real Here's another big downside. When you have multiple, like in this case, there's there's multiple cards here, and they're all having the same design, but you wouldn't actually know that from the looks of these classes. You can't possibly memorize visually all of these classes that you're seeing on this component. So good luck trying to change your design if you have a massive website and, and you're looking to, to update it. Here's another thing I really hate. When I'm looking at the HTML and I see all those classes, which is really just a reinvention of the CSS language. 
Um, the HTML tells you nothing about what the components are anymore. So it's the same HTML structure, but typically like with semantic CSS, we're actually using class names to understand what the content means. So on the left-hand side, you can see article class. This is a blog post that's clearly an article container with a header and it's post header, post title, post meta. Those class names make sense. And it's very clear to me when I look at it, like, oh, those classes are styling that particular portion of this component. And then when I look on the right, the tailwind way, it's all these different reinventions of the CSS language. And again, it has much less semantic meaning when you're looking at it. Uh, so again, debugging is a nightmare. Trying to find out which of these 20 classes is causing your layout issue. So this is what you're going to see all over the place. Uh, here's pseudo selectors in class names, which is uh, unbelievable. Uh, but anyway, you, you see a lot of this. Any sort of complicated Tailwind website, you're going to see a shitload of this stuff. And to me, this is just like why why did we do it this way uh, but again good luck trying to figure out which one of these especially in the cascading nature of CSS is causing this issue and when I say cascading nature that means uh, not necessarily uh, the hierarchy of the styles right the specificity means a lot so steep learning curve if you already know CSS then you're learning tailwind on top of that and it's all you know it's really just a duplication of CSS and just a mer uh, much uglier more cryptic way so again I'm probably old school I think that if you would have just jumped into tailwind and tailwind's all you know that's probably why you like it and 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 that's just the way things are when you learn a new way of doing it even if it's not a more efficient way you're typically going to favor that because you don't want to have to learn the same thing over again um, that's probably a little bit of bias coming from me because it's like I spent a lot of time in CSS. Why would I want to use this? And let's uh, be honest as well. Like if I had to work on a Tailwind website, that's fine. If you're going to pay me to work on a Tailwind website, that is, I'll figure it out. It's no problem. Like it's, it's not like I can't figure this thing out. It's just that if I were making the decisions, I have no reason to use it. So when I mentioned the pros of Tailwind CSS, you can have a small, um, bundle size if you're using like purge css but if you don't know how to do that and you're not familiar with that sort of thing you could easily have a bloated tailwind uh, css so if you look at it it's 3.5 megabytes uncompressed so a lot of websites i would imagine with beginners and things are not purging they're on use css and probably have bloated bundle sizes but again it's just an extra step that you have to do uh, when you're dealing with tailwind um, here's an example of maintenance being hell so your designer wants to change all the buttons from blue to green. With CSS, it's one line, uh, button primary, background green. With Tailwind, you have to find and replace all these different classes uh, in 47 files. Hope you don't miss any. Um, so, again, um, and here's the solution that they don't tell you. So, Tailwind advocates just say extract components. Uh, and then, you know, ultimately, you're going to see that argument all over the place. Um, and when you do that, you've essentially just reinvented CSS classes with extra steps and complexities. So yeah, the bottom line, it's been out since 2017. It's got 88,000 stars on GitHub. There's no jobs. There's hardly any websites that are actually using it. And it's clutter, it's ugly, and uh, tons of different reasons that I wouldn't want to personally use it for my projects. Again, if you're paying me to maintain your project until when, no problem. <laughs>